Hi, Bob Tarlow here, and I'm glad you're watching this video of our News Geezer's Lunch held on Saturday, July 25th, 2015. The venue was once again Victorio's in North Hollywood, and Chef Robert laid out his usual fine Italian buffet. Vince Mack, a Sky Fox photographer with Fox 11 and a longtime member of the Geezers, shot this video, but there was a technical fault, as the sound from the wireless mic on the stage did not record. As we say in the business, stuff happens, although we usually say it a bit stronger than that. Joe Sullivan appointed himself Geezer Chaplin and offered an opening prayer as only Joe can. The sound is just fine on the interviews that David well, I, Sheehan was I, I, nice enough to do with some of you. There's a rumor floating around that you are somehow an undercover spy for the CIA. Is that true? <laughs> well, what a ridiculous question. I mean, I can't tell you. And Shayla, a Pepperdine broadcasting student, joining us for the first time, got to do a couple of interviews as well. Good stuff. Now I have to ask, what is your biggest advice that you'd give to someone uh, that wants to get into reporting? All that's ahead, but first I do want to mention it was Pete Noyes' 85th birthday. And there was a cake and singing and then some of Pete's war stories from his new book, Who Killed the Big News? There's no sound of Pete on stage. We will hear from him in the interviews. And the link to the Amazon site for Pete's book can be found on the front page of our website, newsgazers.com. It's a great read. Pete saluted two industry greats no longer with us, Sam Zellman, the father of the big news, and NBC's John C. Flynn. Again, sorry about the lack of sound here. And here's Ron Becker, a longtime super engineer at KTTV Fox 11, with a note about the sad passing of another superstar former engineer there, longtime geezer Bill Pasternak. Bill worked his magic at Fox 11 for about 30 years and was also a leading light in the world of amateur radio. There's Bill, along with Stan Chambers, at our lunch in April 2013. And now, back to the sound we do have. David Sheehan takes it away as we hear from a group of fellow geezers, young and not so young. I want to know, what was it that inspired you to write Who Killed the Big News? Well, you know... Uh, what inspired me was the lousy local news coverage we've got today at the various stations in L.A., and I thought maybe people would like to learn about a news broadcast that was really a news broadcast that had stories with a beginning, a middle, and an end. And uh, the, the big news was a great experiment, and if you read the book, you'll know that it led to the development of the evening news on CBS, right. which was only a 15-minute broadcast. Yeah. I remember I was there with you. Yeah, you were there a long time. Yeah. And so I, I think that, that was the difference. That There was a big difference in those days. I look today at the high story count. I'm really not interested in all the car accidents and all the, the minor shootings. I want to have stories with substance, you know. Very good. And what do you think of this old geezers thing? It's fine. I'm an old geezer, so I, I qualify for, for yeah. membership. Well, congratulations, sir, on, on the book and on your birthday. All these years later, do, do you miss it, being there night after night after night at the anchor desk? There is life after television, Yes. you know? So um, every now and then when there's a great story, or I love to get together with a group like this because it brings back old memories and fun stuff, you know? But uh, no, you know, Jane Pauley wrote a book, and uh, there was an article in this issue of Time magazine excerpted from it. And she said, you know, first of all, things have changed now. First of all, we have the go-go years, yeah. and then we have some more go-go years. <laughs> you know, she's writing, I'm writing, you're doing your thing. Yeah. and. I have a new book coming out. Oh, we got to plug the book. What is the title, pray tell? You will love the title. Um, it's about the afterlife. You know, you're supposed to bring people somewhere they've never been. The afterlife. In other words, my heroine is dead. She was murdered, and she's really pissed off about that because she's got stuff to do. She's only in her 30s. And the title is, You're Dead, Get Over It. <laughs> is that a follow-up to Trophy Wife? No nope, follow-up to nothing. I've never done the afterlife before, and I made it up. It's fiction. It's a novel. 
but Trophy Life, Trophy Wife was your first one, right? That was my first one, yeah. Yeah, I still remember that. Dick yeah. Smith. I brought it for Dick Smith, but he didn't show up, so here it is. Oh, right. Yes, it's called The Dead File. Very good. But fiction is... But I noticed that when you <laughs> flew in here, you came in from Washington, D.C. I did. Why was that? I was, I was met by uh, with a black car. Black with uh, even the windows were... Everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, even oh. the machine gun in the back. <laughs> No, no, I do work for the government, the agency that oversees Voice of America and Radio Free Europe. And, uh, you know, it's great fun because government broadcasting is about 15 years behind commercial. Yeah. So I've seen their future, and I, it's back to, to the future <laughs> for me. Uh -huh. And I can tell them what's ahead. Ah. And it's very depressing for them. Um, no, we, uh, I have a good time. I get to do TV. I get to uh, travel overseas, I get to make a difference in small ways in remote parts of the world where the only information they have comes from us. So do you supply television too? Television, uh, every platform you can think of. Really? Uh, in uh, 42 different languages. Wow. Pretty amazing. How'd you get into that? I was uh, recruited by them uh, and wasn't interested. And after I'd retired from NBC, I went off to Istanbul to uh, teach. I remember and, that, uh, yeah. To set up a film program there. And when that was done, I was sort of at loose ends. And they called again, and I said, hell yeah, why not? Uh, so it's been great fun. It's been over three years now. It's great to see old colleagues like you and, and Vinny, who I worked with at KTD for a number of years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Bob Long and Tarlo and all the other people. I, re I retired on June 30th, so I don't care anymore. Well, that's not so long ago. You might start to care again. You don't know. No, no the, other day my the other day my wife asked me, do you miss work at all? No. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, no, I know. No, not at all. I, I know what you mean. Do you feel like this is sort of a fraternal kind of organization? Well, I, I, think, that we should have, I think we should have a secret sign. Yeah, we, right. should have a, a, we should have a grip. A handshake, and, yeah. yeah. I know, and... We should, and uh, and we should actually have an oath-taking ceremony. What kind? Oath-taking. You know, oath-taking. Somebody, yeah. you know, so somebody should be a bona fide member. honor as a Boy Scout. Yeah. <laughs> and because somebody asked today, be prepared, be somebody prepared. today said, "Is he, is he a, a regular member or something like that?" Yeah. I started laughing. Or an I, irregular so, member. If you got one, yeah, right. Depends on your, your, uh, what you and your internists have to say about exactly. that. Exactly. Great to see you again. Man. When I was at Channel Two, I always remember you as having. Something to do with money problems. Is that true? No, not at all. I, it was somebody else who was stealing. I, oh. <laughs> I, I never got caught at it. <laughs> right. Because you were in charge of? I was the assignment manager. And right. Then, and then uh, an executive producer started up the uh, news updates. Right. No, but you. T I remember the, in my head, you, uh, that's not in the budget, Sheehan. You can't be doing, I was trying to do something uh, out of the ordinary, I think. I wanted three crews in the same time, and you said, that's, that ain't, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's what you said. <laughs> I said, why not? You said, it's not in the budget. <laughs> oh, 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 besides it being a stupid idea. There was a stupid idea, but I had a lot of stupid ideas. No, you didn't. A few, a few of the other ones worked out all right. No, it's, uh, what you were doing was what the other guys weren't doing. Yeah. So it was a standalone. I'm sure that what you're doing now is going to be a standalone because the people you were doing then oh, are absolute you. titans. Ab yeah. No, you know, I, I was never one for BS. You were right or you were wrong or you were out of there. Yeah. And you were there and you were right. Oh, thank you, sir. No, it's a What about you now, though? Do you miss those days as you kind of are able to take it a little more easy in life? What's your reflection? I'm, I'm writing the reflections, like Ooh. Pete, I'm, I've had a rather unique type of, uh, I worked for the New York Post as a print reporter first, and there I would be covering police headquarters in the morning, the UN in the afternoon. So I had done Fidel Castro, Dwight Eisenhower, uh, Nikita Khrushchev, but these are all, I do them in the morning and do some crook who had stolen a car in the afternoon. Yeah. So now I'm doing my memoirs, showing what a, what a reporter had to do to stay alive in those yeah. days. But 
and it's been fun. Good for you, man. Congratulations. Thank you. I'll give you some non-audio cut of it. What is a young woman like you doing in a group of old geezers like this? Well, this is my first time at News Geezers, so I'm very excited to be here today. Uh, but Bill Dawson actually is one of the engineers at Pepperdine for News Waves, and I'm a student at Pepperdine University. So he told me all about it, and uh, some of my fellow students have been before, so he brought me out today, and I'm really excited to be here. You are. What, what, what's exciting about these all these old people? We, most of these, most of the people in this room are retired. Oh my gosh, no! Everyone has just been so friendly um, and full of so much information. I feel so honored being able to meet everyone. So it's it's been a great day so far. Don't you feel like you're a kid in in, in the, near the graveyard? No, not at all. Like I said, everyone's just been so helpful. Um, has had so much information. I've been asking lots of questions and, and learning a lot. It's. Uh, we are very critical of journalism and with a lot of good reasons. It's not as good as it was, but it's still a great profession and it's good to see young people getting into it. And I taught journalism at USC for many years, one night a week, and it's the best education you can have. Sometimes it's a great education to go on to do something else, but it's rewarding and it's vital and it's good to see young people, and we have many good young people. So it's this meeting of a lot of the old legends, or whatever you want to call the it. old legends, yeah. Yeah, but, it, but it's funny. You notice the sense, of, I don't know what you're going to use, but the sense of humor, yeah. the, the cantankerousness, and even though the average age here is 109. <laughs> Not really, when you, when you're talking, but close. You're talking to everybody, they're telling you what they're doing next. Hi everyone, I'm Sheila Gerard and here at the summer annual News Geezers Lunch where we've had a chance to talk to some of today's guests. Let's take a look. Now I have to ask, what is your biggest advice that you'd give to someone uh, that wants to get into reporting? Uh, well, it's like, you mean television reporting? Television yes. news reporting? Make it real. Any prospective source of a job or even an internship these days, which are hard to get, or any kind of a position in any uh, kind of journalistic organization using uh, video and television or the new media or the social media, anything like that, there, there'll be a, a person. You'll, you'll run into somewhere along the line, you're going to run into that, end up with that person. The person is the hiring person at your prospect. You really want to, you, you got to find a place, right? And there are many places but you go one by one. You go to the place where you want to get a job and you're going to end up with that person, whether it's a producer or human resources or whatever. And you got to keep in your mind that there are only three things that the person can know about you in order to make a judgment. And, and your fate is in that person's hands. So you got to keep in mind the three things. And the number one thing is your personality. He'll like you, you're likable or you're not likable. And sometimes you can control that, and sometimes you can't. But you try, you got to work on that. You know, you're you're doing fine. No, you're doing fine because you got me on, and so you're you're likable. But some people are just not likable, or they're too serious, or you they they need the money, or whatever. You know, you got to you got to make yourself likable. That's number one. Number two, you got to have a good reel, and then number three, you got to gather together endorsements like little reviews, like a movie when they run an ad in the paper and it's a, the New York Times says, the LA Times says, that kind of stuff. I mean, not, not like a screaming ad, but you need people to actually say, not just a list of references. You need me to say. David Sheehan, 44 year veteran of CBS and NBC, saw my demo and he said this. Wow, I never thought anything like that. <laughs> All right, so Terry, as a news director, tell me what is your advice for someone who wants to get into reporting? 
instead of just watching the entertainment shows, those are so highly edited, you should try and learn the basics of reporting. You should learn how to put together a complete sentence, how to write a story, and stay current on what's going on, even though you may not think it's important to your entertainment aspirations. You really need to learn how to read people when you're talking to them. You need to understand that uh, how to phrase a question so they can't answer it with a one or two word sentence. And then just practice. Practice on your mom, practice on your brother, practice. But also, instead of just being narrow to entertainment, maybe you would like to go into news reporting, even though it's, sometimes it's not too pretty. But, but just understand how journalism works, and you'll be a better entertainment reporter. And as someone who's been involved with journalism for such a long time, how would you say you've seen journalism change over the years? Everybody thinks it's changed tremendously. I think it's changed for the better because there are more outlets, there are more cable channels, there is Amazon Prime, there is Netflix, there are all of these uh, systems on the internet that provide audio and video for people. So just be flexible and you'll be able to remain in the business. Good advice. Okay, and so you're here today at News Geezers. I want to know what's been the best part uh, about today's lunch so far. Well, the best part is seeing people you worked with 5, 10, 20 years ago and uh, ignore the gray hair and some of the uh, age issues, but it's still the journalism group is they're very similar people. They're excited about life. They want to know what's going on in the world. They're still interested. They probably still read newspapers on a daily basis. They, they're in tune with what's going on. Well, thank you so much for letting me talk okay. to you. I feel so honored. Okay. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. And also, one other yeah. thing. Uh, read, a, read the LA Times every day. Okay. That's good Don't advice. just get it from the internet. Read the Times. See how stories are structured. Get a good radio, TV, journalism book. If, uh, I know you're a Pepperdine, but you probably have some good uh, books in the curriculum there. But hang on to them and reread them and practice that way. But learn to write. You have to know how to write. Okay? Good advice. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. <laughs>